Go ahead, Lisa. Okay. Good evening. This is the call of the Wilmette Public Library Board meeting to order on January the 18th, 2020 at 6.31 p.m. And at this point, can we have a roll call? Certainly. Trustee okay. Fishman. Here. Trustee Nealon. Um, you're muted, Trish. We see you. Sorry, I'm here. Thank you. Um, Trustee O'Keefe. Here. Trustee Riddle is absent. Trustee Summer. Here. Trustee Wolf is absent. And Trustee McDonald. Here. And do should and we should just do do you just take a picture or should we cite that we have two representatives from the league? Yes, I see that we have um, Georgia Gephardt and Mary Lawler from the league. Welcome. Yeah. And we've also got three members of our staff. I see Patsy Devono, John Risco, Marty Belfontaine, and me, Anthony Austin, your director. Thank you. At this time, it's time for public comment. Is there anyone that would like to address the board? Um, I would like to address, yes, Mary. address the board. <laughs> okay. Okay, so um, as you know, my name is Mary Lawler and I am here tonight from the League of Women Voters of Womet. Um, my position this year has been to head up our um, community education and engagement, good governance focus area. Um, and our co-presidents, Wendy Zahn and Ann Sullivan, um, authorized me to speak for the league tonight. I think you may have received, you all may have received a letter, an email from Wendy and Ann. Um, yep. And I'm here just to really re reiterate what was in that, that letter and urge the library to put back up on the website the historic board and committee meeting materials that had been taken down from the website when, when it was revamped. I know the email also referred to historic board videos and we see there are board videos on the website going back to 2017. So my comments tonight really are just focused on the meeting materials. Um, we really appreciate the board, the library's new website. It has a lot of great information. Um, including on the financial information page. Although just as an aside, that page is kind of hard to find. It would be good to put some more obvious links to it. Um, and so, um, but, but with respect to meeting materials, um, everything earlier than just a few months ago is gone other than um, agendas and minutes. Um, so none of the board meeting materials that the board looked at and that had been posted is on anymore. And um, that really makes the library an outlier in Wilmette with respect to government bodies and historic meeting materials. The village board, park board, district 39 and district 203 school boards all have meeting materials going back many years, not just a few months. And um, we really hope the, the library of all our local governments would be a leader in keeping historic meeting information on its website. And we hope that it will be a good source of information for um, Wilmette residents seeking to understand what's, you know, their library board, perhaps engage with the library board, maybe run for election or even just vote in an informed way. So we hope the library will work towards more information and not us. <laughs> so thank you all for um, your service to our community. And thank you, Mary. And you should be uh, the, the individuals that sent the letter will be receiving a letter from me tomorrow. Okay. In terms of what the library's position is. And so we thank you for your interest in terms of transparency. We feel we are transparent, and I'm glad that you cited what the other village entities are doing. But one of the things that we look for are best practices within the library systems. Also, we looked and tracked how much in, where the sites were and what sites were visiting, and very few people were viewing those sites. And I believe that you can attest that any time that you have requested something from Director Austin, 
you've gotten it pretty speedily. So I don't think it's a case of being of trying to be transparent. I think that the new uh, website just got up in October. It's, it's a work in progress and we are constantly working on it. And we look to put what most people look for. And while we might not only cite the minutes, we put any major reports on, on, that, on the website. And I think the other thing is we have a hundred years of minutes. So I think in terms of our archives, we've got our archives. I think in terms of, and as you stated, you've got the YouTube that has all our board meetings since we started recording. So I think that's my thought. I think some of the other board members will be working on the financial page and some of the other things, but we appreciate it. And in terms of uh, encouraging people to run for the board when it gets near election time, there generally is a push in both electronically as well as in the newsletter. So thank you in terms of what the requirements are and what's needed in terms of when that season starts. So thank you. Okay. Are there any other comments from the public? Okay. At this point in time, you've got your minutes from the November 16th, 2021 meeting. And there's one correction, which Director Austin has already talked to in terms of correcting uh, Mrs. Gephardt George's uh, last name. Are there any, is there any other corrections? Can we have a motion to approve the minutes? For the regular meeting of November 16th, 2021. Also motion to approve those meeting uh, minutes from uh, the meeting of November 2021. Thank you. Trustee Wolf has moved to approve the uh, minutes from uh, November 16th, 2021. Is there a second? I second. Okay. Trustee Summer has, has seconded the motion to approve the minutes. Is there any additional discussion? Okay. Had been none, can we have a roll call to approve the minutes from the November 16, 2021 meeting? Certainly. Uh, Trustee Fishman? Yes. Trustee Nealon? Yes. Trustee O'Keefe? Yes. Trustee Riddle is absent. Trustee Summer? Yes. Trustee Wolf? Yes. And Trustee McDonald? Here. Thank you. Okay, at this time we'll turn it over to our treasurer, Trustee Summer, for the treasurer's report. Oh, wait one minute. There are no presentations, so let me just note that there are no pre presentations for this meeting. And now we'll turn it over to the uh, treasurer's report with Trustee Summer. Thank you, Trustee McDonald. Um, I just have a couple of small comments. Um, as you all looked at, there was a small grant receipt of $1,300. I know it's small, but I didn't know what it was, so I asked. It is a quarterly rail support grant that we receive. Um, another item that caught my eye was there was a check for $16,775 in December to Computer View. And it seemed kind of high for computer maintenance, but according to John and Anthony, it actually is a um, quarterly fee we pay them for computer maintenance. Um, utilities tend to be running under budget, but keep in mind uh, with the winter heating bills, they generally will probably catch up to a more uh, on budget. So even though they look pretty far under budget now, the winter will change that. Um, and probably the only other comment, um, I was talking to Trustee O'Keefe, and if you're looking at the financials in December, it looks like that we have a year to date loss of net loss of $1.6 million. I just want to, if John can correct me if my explanation isn't completely accurate, but it really represents the operating expense, income and expenses, less the distribution of any funds from the special reserve fund. So, you know, we did put, have a fairly significant outlay of our, I believe it's our final, you know, large payment for the capital project. So we really don't have what would I would consider an operating loss of $1.6 million. Does my Explanation makes sense to every, anybody? Anybody have any questions on that? Concerns? All right. Um, any questions at all on the rest of the financials, checks, anything? 
All right, would someone like to make a motion to uh, approve the bills and salary check detail? I move to approve the bills and salaries detail. For November and December, 2021. Yes. And I will second that. Thank you. So Trustee Fishman has seconded the approval of bills and salaries check detail for November, December 2021 after Trish Nealon. Trustee Nealon moved, made the motion. Is there any additional discussion regarding the uh, November and December bills and salaries? Okay, being none, can we have a roll call for? Certainly, Trustee Fishman? Yes. Trustee Nealon? Yes. Trustee O'Keefe? Yes. Trustee Riddle is absent. Trustee Summer? Yes. Trustee Wolf? Yes. And Trustee McDonald? Yes. Thank you. At this point, we, trend, we move to action items. Uh, six of the seven trustees were present for the December 14th review of all our policies. They those six approved us bringing forth the policies with some uh, changes that have been made, which I'll just briefly go over with the policies. And prior to that, uh, Anthony, Director Austin's procedure is basically he and his leadership team get together and they look over uh, what acts, say for instance, in the uh, event of general rules of conduct. And so they look and they talk about it and uh, come to agreement. Then it goes to legal. Then generally after it goes through legal, we see it. And so that was at the point where we discussed it. I don't know if you want to have, add anything else in regards to the procedure, Director Austin. Okay. So the first uh, policy that we approved is the COVID-19 vaccination policy. It's a new policy. And some of the changes that were suggested to that policy, uh, basically what that policy is doing, and I'm just gonna do it, it's basically looking at what is being happening with the state. And so it is a fluid policy. And so what we do is generally, it's putting in practice what we've been doing. And so is there any discussion on the COVID-19 vaccination policy? And I think we applaud the efforts that uh, Director Austin has been doing with the COVID-19 policy, because when we get to two comments, two of our patrons have complimented us on keeping things safe. So we've had more people for it over the last two years, I think, than against it. The next policy is the general rules of conduct, Appendix 3D. And a lot of paper. What that does is basically put detail what is acceptable behavior in the library. And uh, in some cases, it will be posted so that the public knows. So is there any discussion regarding Appendix D for general rules of conduct? The next update to, is to policy five, financial management. We had passed that policy earlier last year, but upon having our audit, there were two additions, one in, ter in terms of financial management for outstanding checks and capital assets. So those are the additions to policy five. Okay. And then uh, the next policy regards library. Any discussion on that one, financial management? Okay. Next policy decide, uh, talks about the library facilities and it covers a wealth of topics in terms of just giving, providing more direction as to things such as uh, Basically, in, this is like a hot mess. Okay. Let's do some library. They 
Lisa, I pulled it up. Um, okay. Such as the disaster plan, safety Thanks. drills, smoking, cleaning, very miscellaneous. Okay. Thank you. It's all in paper land. And then the last policy is community relations. And so it specifies a little bit more in terms of the use of library bulletin boards, distribution of materials, tabling, exhibits, and displays. And one of the changes, additions really was basically, yeah. So that's basically it in terms of just clarifying it. So it will be easy for uh, the staff to implement the policies as well as to explain it to the community. Any other discussion regarding the policies? Policies. I just have, <laughs> okay, Tracy. Tracy, oh, Tracy I, then was, we'll do uh, I was just gonna say, I really appreciate them, the library and the director being so forward thinking in the vaccination policy. I fully support it. And I'm hoping that the staff feel the same way. I think it, as a patron who's in there all the time, I am very grateful that that is the policy. It's just a nice feeling to know that those people that we might be in close contact with and for people that they may be their coworkers. So um, I'm very, very happy. And I fully support that policy in addition to the other ones. Okay, Trish, trustee Neil. Yes, <laughs> I wanted to comment on the um, community um, engagement relations policy. Um, I found I find it really valuable that um, the library has really clarified who exactly our partners are and how there's mutual benefit between groups and how it singles out Friends of Library as uh, an affiliate mm -hmm. and um, and then also reflects an openness to work with um, uh, partners in the future going forward. It kind of keeps the door open to um, uh, some good collaborations as they may arrive. Mm -hmm. And we look forward to your committee, Community Relations, exploring some of those relationships. So thank you. Okay. May we have a motion? Yes, I move approval of the draft policies, uh, COVID-19 vaccination policy, Appendix 3D, the general rules of conduct, the updates to policy five, um, financial management, um, outstanding checks and capital assets, and policy six, library facilities, and policy eight, community relations as presented. Okay, may I have a second? I second. I will second that. Okay, well, we'll let Trustee O'Keefe get a again. second first. Tracy. Okay, we get, <laughs> we get everybody to second, but thank you. <laughs> Trustee uh, Wolf has moved and Trustee O'Keefe has seconded the motion to approve, move the approval of draft policies, COVID-19 vaccination policy, Appendix 3D, general rules of conduct, updates to policy five, Financial management policy five, financial management, the addition of outstanding checks and capital assets, policy six, library facilities, and policy eight, community relations as presented. Since we've had discussion, can we have a vote roll call for, to approve them? Certainly. Trustee Fishman. Yes. Trustee Nealon. Yes. Trustee O'Keefe. Yes. Trustee Riddle is absent. Trustee Summer? Yes. Uh, Trustee Wolf? Yes. And Trustee McDonald? Yes. Okay. So now we turn over to talk about discussion items. And are you ready to give the capital repairs and project update when we turn it over to Director Austin? Thank you. First of all, thank you so much for your review um, of those policies and for your thoughtful discussion um, and questions about those policies, both in committee and here this evening. We, we really appreciate being able to move forward um, with the comprehensive review of all of our policies and to um, be able to, to compile this information both for the staff and to soon be able to develop our policy page once uh, our policy manual is complete and to get that updated on our website so that we can share that with the community. Um, we're really excited to have these steps taken, so thank you. Um, all right, so an update about our 2021 capital repair project. Um, so as you know, um, our project has essentially been complete since I would say September-ish. Um, but it does have a bit of a long tail, and we've talked about that in our past several meetings, and that there were a few 
um, elements of the project that were held up through a number of matters that were out of control of, of the library and our contractors, um, namely our fire, um, our new fire suppression system, uh, fire alarm system, not suppression, fire alarm system, um, had some parts and components that were held up in production um, due to supply chain issues and it wasn't able to be delivered and installed on time. Um, that project was essentially completed in December when those materials were installed. Um, however, recently um, there was um, an inspection of those items when they were installed. And um, there were some challenges with um, the interpretation of the code by which that they were installed uh, that led to us not being able to test them. Um, you may recall that on January 3rd, we were planning to be open um, a little late. We were gonna delay our opening until noon so that we could have the morning to test all of our new equipment. And unfortunately, we were not approved to proceed with the testing because um, there was a conflict in the code. So um, we've gone through our punch list, we've met with engineers, we've met with um, the installers and um, the inspectors as well. And we've reached a consensus about where we need to go with this. Um, effectively, there are a few fire alarms that were not specced to go into um, some of our back of house spaces, particularly in the basement boiler rooms. Um, they're calling for a couple additional units to be installed. Um, so we're waiting for the installation of that, the, that equipment. And once they're installed, um, then we can proceed with the final inspection and then proceed with the installation or the, um, uh, the testing. So um, it is, it's still a little bit of a delay. The project is essentially complete, but these finishing details remain. We've been working on some finish work over the course of the last month. In fact, if you've been in the library over the course of the last couple of weeks, you may have noticed that it's, it's looking rather refreshed. We had a painter who went through here and um, touched up a lot of walls. And since we had some allowances left um, in, in a couple of our lines, we were able to um, have that painter handle a few areas that were on our wish list for a long time that required uh, more professional handling than what the staff can, can ordinarily manage in their day-to-day -day duties. So there's a couple large walls, particularly in the stairway um, in the center of the library, that wall that runs all the way from the basement up to the third floor, um, had some surface mounted wire molds and had some um, fire alarm equipment that was mounted on it uh, that is no longer needed to be installed there, but the wall needed to be dressed up and repaired. We had a professional work on that for us. Um, they also worked on painting some other spaces for us and brightening up some areas where we had some dark paint or just plain needed to repaint some areas. Um, so we've been able to work on, um, during this time to, to beautify the library as well as to do some really critical uh, safety infrastructure improvements. So um, we're pretty thrilled with what, the way the project has gone. Um, you may recall that this did kick off back in March and we had a huge scope of work um, that included a comprehensive work on the exterior of the building um, with the repair of all of the um, uh, brickwork, uh, the parapet. Um, we did comprehensive tuck pointing of the entire building. Um, we renewed all the warranties on our mini roofs um, by recoding them and getting new surfaces and treating various leaks that were happening at the, at the, uh, the roof level of the building. Um, later in the project, we went down to the lower level and dealt with water remediation issues related to water infiltration that we've been dealing with for actually probably a couple decades um, on the south side of the building, and that work was completed during the summer months. Um, concurrent with that, um, that, that was part of the drain tile work that we did. Um, concurrent with that, we started working on interior low voltage work, as well as the comprehensive replacement of the electrical main. Uh, that was one of the biggest aspects of our project, and certainly from a budgetary standpoint, that was the most significant aspect of the project. Um, we closed for a period of two weeks in August to complete the um, uh, replacement of the electrical main, as well as the main distribution um, power equipment. And as part of that project, we replaced all the cloth wire in the building. Um, there were a number of cloth wires that had, had been there from um, many, many renovations ago. Uh, the building is a lot safer as a result of that. Uh, we consolidated a number of our electric panels and improved the safety um, overall of the library by consolidating a lot of that equipment. Um, during that closure, we also did um, an update and replacement of some of the pavers in our parking lot. Since the building was closed, we seized that opportunity to do the first major work on our parking lot in over 10 years since the installation of those permeable pavers. 
Um, so all that work was completed. And then following that work, we turned our attention back inside the library and started working on the low voltage installation work related to some of our computer work, um, as well as our security infrastructure, our security camera system, as well as finally the fire alarm system that is nearing completion now. Um, like I said, there's a lot of finish work that was associated with all of that and we're in the final um, days of that work. Uh, last Friday, our uh, contractors and our construction manager met with the staff and I, and we went through and completed the final punch list of the project. Um, that was memorialized with our architect uh, via email um, yesterday. And um, so now we have our, our documents in place to kind of start crossing all these items off of our list. We anticipate that we're going to be able to complete this work. Um, you know, if everything goes as planned by the end of the month, um, we'll see how that goes. And I hope by the time we meet here for uh, our next meeting in February that I can tell you that we're effectively complete and that we'll be able to close out this project and get any of the final invoicing resolved. Um, do you all have any questions about our capital repair project? Yeah, Lisa, go ahead. I know when I talked to someone from Tesla when it had gotten postponed, do you see any delay in actually getting the uh, thought that there might be a problem with them being in supply in terms of the alarms? The, the remaining equipment, I believe, is, is on hand. Is, um, so it's just a matter of getting it installed at this point. So really, it's just going to be the final details of the installation, the punch list, the inspections, and testing. So it's primarily administrative at this point. Any other questions? Yeah, Joan. Um, did I miss something or is there the need for that late closure once they agree on some of the smoke detect or the detectors and so forth? Yeah, we're, yeah. so since we did um, have that plan for January 6th and that didn't come to pass, will we still need to do that? We're gonna do everything that we can to avoid um, have any impact on public operations. However, it's it's possible that we may need to ultimately um, complete some of that work during um, the regular business hours. Um, the crews can start early, and um, for a number of the inspections, they have been able to do a lot of that before the staff has even arrived for other aspects of the project. So it's possible that we may be able to scale this in a way that it wouldn't have an impact on staff. Um, that said, um, I do think that there is an advantage to us um, having a delayed start on one of the days so that the staff has an opportunity to hear this new system uh, firsthand to know what this new system is like. So there's a new um, ADA code that has informed the way that our fire alarm system works. It's not just the loud buzzing that gets everyone's attention and then the flashing strobes. There's actually an audio announcement that accompanies it that gives instructions for what a person is supposed to do in responding to uh, those fire alarms. So I would, like, I would like for the staff to be able to see that. And per the policy that you all have just approved in policy six, we do hold regular drills at the library. And I would like to be able to complete a fire alarm drill with the staff with this new system. So I think it may be advantageous for us to do a late start, if even for just an hour or so um, at some point here in the next month. But we will give as much notice as possible when that time comes. Thank you. I think you did a fine job of giving notice. I, I noticed it on Nextdoor or on uh, your Facebook page. So I, I I don't see a problem when it arises again. Thank you. All right. Anything else related to the building? OK. All right, then. Okay, uh, director, it's looking good. That's all I've got to say. Can't wait till we can have some programs in there. <laughs> when COVID acts, when whoever, whatever the next little bug is acting right. Okay, ready for your director's report? Certainly. Well, let me bridge on that for just a second and kind of say a little bit more. So there were some areas that were affected by the capital improvement project that have um, had an effect on some of our spaces. So to, to Trustee McDonald's point, um, the auditorium has effectively been off limits to the public for the better part of that closure. Um, we're looking forward to being able to reopen that room. Um, and when the time is appropriate for us to allow gatherings again in that space, 
um, we may be able to start booking that room again for public use and have, have meetings in that space again. Um, we certainly had our meeting back there in November, but Omicron happened and now here we are again in the remote environment. Um, the small meeting room is another space that has been impacted and has been used as a staging area for a good part of this project. Um, and we're looking forward to being able to reopen that as well, both from a staff standpoint for meetings, as well as for the public to have another area to go. Um, and uh, there are a couple other areas that have also been closed. Some of our study rooms, as well as the quiet study room, um, have also been um, closed during this tenure for the project. And we're looking forward to reopening those here shortly as well. So stay tuned for more updates on those spaces. All right, so on to my report. Um, I'm really excited to, to tee off my report here this evening by sharing the news that I'm sure many of you have already heard, but I think it's the first public meeting that we're having where I get to share this news. So Wilmette Public Library has been named by Library Journal for the third consecutive year, a five-star library. And what that means is that Wilmette Library is comparatively well used by its community compared to other library statistics in the nation. In fact, for our budget category, Wilmette Public Library is the number four ranked library in the nation. Um, so for per capita um, visits, circulation, e-circulation, Wi-Fi use, uh, database usage, um, our community really takes advantage of the library. Um, our statistics and the public's use of our facilities um, are what have gained um, this accolade for the library. So we share um, this honor with our community. It is our patrons that help us to achieve this ranking. Um, so we're really excited to be recognized again for the third year. Uh, this is the fourth year that we've been recognized as a star library and the third as a five. So um, kudos to Wilmette Library for and its community for, for that accolade. Um, in my report this month, um, there's a lot of materials. Um, I shared about 60 pages worth of content with you. Um, so my usual director's report is, is, is in that 20 to 30 page range. And then um, this is the time of the year where we provide a year end summary to our progress towards a strategic plan. Um, and I tried to even shrink the font on that to, to make it a little bit smaller for you all. But um, I know it's a lot of text, a lot to go through, but we've accomplished a lot this year. And I will touch a bit on the strate strategic plan here in a moment when I get through um, with the rest of my report. Uh, so I'll go through a few of the items um, from my report. And if there's any questions that you have for me or anything that you want to pull out, by all means, um, pipe up at any point. So um, as we go through this kind of from front to back, I'm really thrilled to announce that um, we launched our new story walk on the west side of town. Um, so in Hibbard Park, um, we now have a permanent story walk. Um, you may all know our story walks from over here at Botman Park. Um, we've had that in place for, for quite some time now. Um, however, those little signs uh, get picked up and moved a fair bit. Um, recognizing that the community has really been invested in our story walks and our partnership with the park district has reflected that um, they're very much interested in the library's presence in the parks. Um, we were able to develop this partnership and to install a more permanent fixture and our first permanent presence really on the west side of town. So we're thrilled about that. Um, if you haven't already gone and take a look at it, it looks really attractive. Um, so we, we thank the, uh, the Park District for their facilitation and installation of the signage that they did for us. Um, in December, we replaced our mobility equipment that's right at the entrance of the library. Our facilities manager, Marcos Levy, um, purchased a new wheelchair and walker for us. Uh, the mobility equipment that we had there had probably been there for um, at least 25 years and was definitely dated and there's better equipment out there. So we were happy to finally um, retire that old equipment and offer something better to the community. Um, I wanted to, to, to draw a note to one of our partnerships um, that continues to grow and develop. Um, the Chamber of Commerce of Wilmette and Kenilworth um, has been providing the library with lists of new residents in the community as well as new businesses that have come to town. And our circulation department has been using the, the lists of new residents to reach out to them. Um, we, we're sending um, letters to those uh, new residents, um, advertising the library services and giving an opportunity to pre-apply for library cards and to become more familiar uh, with all of the resources that they have available to them as residents. We're doing the same with businesses. As you know, our, our circulation policy that we adopted earlier this year or earlier in 21 
um, offers business library cards. And our new business librarian, John Amundsen, has been um, really developing his relationship with the chamber and has been using uh, the list that we've acquired from them to, um, to start reaching out to those businesses here uh, in January to introduce us. So excited about that. Um, in December, we um, officially launched the, the, the official furniture for the welcome desk. If you've been in the building lately, you've noticed that we do have more intentional furnishings in, those pla in that place. And hopefully with a future renovation of that area, we can um, further improve uh, the accessibility of that desk. But we do have a new desk there now, um, and that has proven popular. Um, um, moving down my list a little bit more, um, in terms of digital services, I'm really thrilled to announce that um, Adult Services Manager Jill McEwen has taken on the task of helping us um, better promote the accessibility of all of our digital subscriptions by enacting a proxy server. Um, a proxy server um, effectively is going to make it easier for all of our patrons to access all of our subscription databases. As you know, um, we invest almost a half million dollars every year in digital resources. And a lot of those research resources, which are included in the electronic services statistics at the back of my report, um, are incredibly popular with our community. A lot of folks do research on a number of topics. And those research databases require authentication to get, get access to them. Um, sometimes it's just as simple as entering your library card. Other times it's a number of steps that you need to jump through. And in some cases, those resources are only available inside the library's walls when you're on our IP address. Um, in order to facilitate access to all those resources, we have enacted this proxy server which effectively acts as though the person accessing the resources is inside the building. And it makes it easy for you to access those resources as you only need to sign in once and then you have access to all of them. Um, so there's a lot of technical know-how that has to go into developing this. Um, it's not something that Jill or I were very familiar with. It's a new thing to us and we had to kind of learn by the seat of our pants. Um, Jill really took on this project in addition to her normal responsibilities as she inherited some of this after Stephen Koble, our digital services manager, um, had moved on last summer. So we're thrilled that we're at the final stages of this. We went through testing last week and we'll be launching that service here by the end of the month. So stay tuned for a little bit more about, about how our digital resource access is going to be improving, but huge step forward for us there. Another huge step forward that we take in December was um, finally the arrival of our automated material handling system. Uh, there is a picture of that in my report where you can see uh, Patsy and Michael modeling um, in front of uh, the AMH. Um, we're thrilled that that finally arrived. As you know, that's been about a year in the making getting that equipment in here after a, a number of hoops that we had to jump through to get it there, but um, it finally is here. Staff has been trained and the efficiencies that that system has created um, have created a wealth of opportunity for us already. Um, some tasks that can take hours are taking merely minutes for us and it is pre-sorting a lot of our items, making it easier for the staff to handle things and get those materials back on the shelf or to patrons just that much more quickly. Um, this is all part of the RFID project that we did earlier this year, where you may recall that the staff installed a quarter of a million targets in every single physical item that the library circulates. Uh, this is the back end of that system that um, enables us to check in all of those items and sort them back to where they belong. So we're thrilled that that thing is in place and that the staff is able to use it. And if any of you would like a tour of how it works, um, you can certainly um, let us know and we'll give you a firsthand account. Or if you just want to peek in like some of the folks are doing um, uh, in the back of the library there, kind of by the parking lot pickup, um, you can see it in action from the window. Um, so we're thrilled to have the AMH. Um, so speaking of RFID, I, I wanted to note from the circulation statistics that um, our self-checkout usage has really gone up markedly. Um, you may recall that we had added um, a couple self-checkouts early in 2020. Um, back in 2019, self-checkout really only accounted for about 20% of our circulation. Um, that was off of two units. We replaced those two units early in 2020. And then by the time we had seven units um, this last summer, um, our, our total circulation um, is coming 46% off of our self-checkouts. So um, a, lot of, a lot of the public is choosing that as an option. 
um, especially with the addition of our, our holds being over by the um, uh, recent arrivals area. A lot of folks are taking advantage of picking up their, their holds there and then checking out themselves. Also, we note that the children really love to check out their own materials and they're taking advantage of that equipment on the second floor. Uh, we do have self-checkouts on every floor of the library and we have statistics for each of them to reflect why they're where they are. Um, they're all in use. Um, also from the circulation report, I wanted to share that um, uh, we've always, we're always trying to do something for sustainability and uh, the circulation staff had a really great idea here recently at the end of the year. Um, we have sunsetted the use of our single use plastic. Um, we had these recyclable bags that we were putting all of our parking lot materials in um, since early on in the pandemic. And um, we've recently acquired a lot more of our circulating totes uh, that the patrons can check out. And we were like, hey, this is a really clever idea. Why, why not just put all these items in here and make it just that much easier uh, for us to transport these items? They're more durable bags and um, it's a greener solution. So if you're using parking lot pickup, you will notice that um, we have reusable totes now that we're using for those materials. All right, on to programming. Um, Anthony, uh, yeah, um, go ahead, I have Joan. a question. How is the, um, I love the reusable totes and take them, check them out often. How is the return though? Are we getting them back or do we lose? I don't have, st I don't, yeah, I don't have statistics at hand for you about that. Okay. Um, it is true that it has been kind of hard for folks to return those at, at times, which is why we acquired uh, certainly more of them so that they were always <laughs> some available. Um, but yeah, I, I think that sometimes, you know, if patrons re renew their items, they may just renew the bags with them too, and the bags don't come back. So it was really more of a question of making sure that we had the right quantity in the first place. Okay. Thank you. But they do have a, they have a barcode on them, so they get checked out just like the books do and they need to come back. Okay. All right. Um, programming. Uh, so we had our Meet the Author event, um, which was on December 1st, and we hosted Omar el -Akkad, and we had nearly 70 um, screens that uh, viewed that particular event, so we were really thrilled for that and our partnership with Jack Dopolt from uh, Northwestern, um, as well as our programming partners, Amy Barrow and um, uh, Barbara Goodman. Uh, so we were really thrilled about that. Um, good positive response to that programming. Uh, speaking of programming, we just kicked off our Winter Reading Club on January 3rd, and that continues through the end of February. Uh, this year, our theme is to encourage folks to read outside of the genres that they usually do. Uh, if you go to our website, we've provided um, some reading lists for folks um, to try out something that they may not ordinarily read. Um, so do check that out. And um, we're offering the same incentive prizes this year as we have in, in years past generously funded by the Friends of the Wilmette Public Library. Um, speaking of programming, we did have to make a difficult decision here in January regarding in-person programming. You may recall that our New Year's Eve Eve um, music event uh, that's typically held on uh, December 30th, we went ahead and suspended that program, recognizing the rise of Omicron in our community and the high rates of transmission of COVID. Um, we are really excited to be able to offer in-person programming again. We were doing that for a while late in the fall and seeing really great participation. And it felt like things were getting back to normal or what seemed like it until the numbers showed that it just wasn't time for that. Um, so we have suspended in-person programming until we see those numbers improve locally, and then we'll start slowly reintroducing uh, safe in-person programming again. We'll follow the same procedures that we did in the past by trying to keep um, those program attendance uh, events to a smaller crowd um, and to try to encourage uh, social distancing as much as possible in those events. So stay tuned for more announcements about our, our in-person programming. For now, we are uh, fully remote for our events. Um, hopefully, you've all received our latest newsletter in your mailboxes um, within the last week or so. Uh, this was due to hit homes um, late December, early January. And per the last comment that I just made, um, COVID had its impact on our print shop, and they were not able to complete production of the newsletter in time for it to get to the post office and hit mailboxes in our community because that whole operation was wiped out. So um, it is a very serious thing and it has a lot of sweeping impacts. 
Uh, that said, uh, the newsletter is out there and is advertising all of the program and programs and events that we have going on right now. And also on the back cover, it features, features the announcement, this is reversed, but it features the announcement of our One Book Everyone Reads program for this um, coming spring. And that title is Three Girls from Bronzeville by Dawn Turner. Um, you can begin to place holds on that item now and begin reading it. We've got a whole host of programs that we're developing um, in support of our One Book Everyone Reads program. Um, and you'll certainly be hearing more about that here in the coming months. Um, Dawn Turner will be joining us virtually on May 11th. So we've got we got a good bit bit of time before we're going to get to to the events specific to that. But uh, I know folks are always excited for that announcement, what the title is going to be. So there it is. Um, so a few other exciting announcements to share with you. We've got some new staff that are joining us here soon. Um, I am thrilled to announce that we are going to be hiring. We have hired our new assistant director. Uh, Leah White is joining us from the Skokie Public Library, and she will be starting here on uh, February 7th. So um, I'm looking forward to introducing you all to her at a future board meeting. It may be our February meeting or, or thereafter. Um, so looking forward to sharing um, uh, the goals of our new assistant director with you here very soon. Um, Coincidentally, um, we hired Leah's former boss um, for our technical services department. Um, former director of the ELA Public Library, Matt Womack, has joined us as the assistant manager of the technical services department. Um, Matt decided to make a late career change and get back to his roots as a cataloger. Um, and he also has a lot of a background with Polaris, actually our integrated library system having worked for them. So he's a real asset and we're, we're thrilled to have him on our team as well. Um, also in technical services, I'm thrilled to announce that um, Carly Staus is joining us as our cataloging librarian. Carly has been with us in a number of capacities over the last few years. Um, she recently is a graduate with her library science degree and has a specialty in technical services as well as youth services, which was a perfect match for her new role where she is going to be cataloging all of our youth material. Um, and she will also have a shift in um, our youth services department as well to get more familiar with the collections and how they're used there. So we're thrilled to have Carly full time. And I'm also happy to announce that this Monday, yesterday, um, was Annabella's uh, first day in our digital services department. Um, so we're, we're continuing to grow and to fill some vacancies um, as we build back um, from some challenges over the course of the last year or so. All right, I'm gonna pause for a moment to take a sip of my tea. Does anyone have any questions about the director's report before I get into the strategic plan? One thought, Anthony, and if it's if it's not worth it, then you can ignore this. But um, you were talking before about the the uh, the new um, the, the equipment um, with with Patsy and with Mike. If it's like if we could do like a quick like a twenty second video or something and post it on the website so people could see it operating that way was just one thought. But um, and again, you can kick it to the curb if it's a bad idea. So that's a great idea. I love it. Okay. Well. All right. Um, any other questions or comments from the director's report? All right, um, so I, I think what I will do as far as the summary for the strategic plan, um, there's a couple of ways that we can handle this. I can kind of paint some broad brush strokes and talk about the themes of the strategic plan. And if, the, if you wanna get into anything in, in particular, we can certainly do that as well. So let me, let me just start by saying that um, we had agreed, um, recognizing that the strategic plan was going to sunset in June of 21, that um, we were gonna take this fiscal year uh, to renew all of the objectives of that original strategic plan, effectively taking it into its fourth year, while we continue to plan forward for what our next development is gonna be for this new iteration of the strategic plan that we're gonna work on over the course of the next six months or so, um, and have that guide our, our strategies as we move forward. So all of the objectives that we're working towards here are to reinforce a number of the items that we've been working on already for the last three years. And so what you're seeing in this year's summary um, is, a, is a continuity of our enhanced engagement, um, both with our community, with our staff, and with our partners, and our efforts to be more community-centric in the forums that we're developing and uh, the programming that we're doing uh, to help support our community initiatives. Um, we have been 
um, really focused in this last year in developing services for the business community and our outreach to businesses. Um, we're that's part and parcel with um, our new business librarian, uh, John Amundsen. We also have our genealogy and local history librarian, Eva Ann Johnson, who has greatly enhanced the programming and services that we have regarding local history um, and the genealogy programming that we're offering. Uh, she's also been a strong partner for us in helping to bring forward um, the programming that we're planning for Wilmet 150 as we are celebrating the village's sesquicentennial this year. Um, we've also done a lot to enhance our reader services, including the further development and refinement of our website and how that promotes our collections. Um, we've also continued to do a lot of development with our author programming. Um, you may recall that we have begun a partnership with a number of area libraries in this last year, uh, an organization called Illinois Libraries Presents, uh, which is a partnership of uh, dozens of libraries across Northern Illinois, who are all joining hands together in order to bring in big name authors that individually we would not be able to bring to our communities. But when we share these um, opportunities to host these programs collectively, uh, we can have a much stronger impact. So Wilmet is part of that program. We've also greatly enhanced our outreach and programming to youth services. Our youth services staff has been absolutely exceptional and clearly challenged a lot by what's been happening throughout the pandemic and has been doing an awful lot to keep families and children engaged um, when their whole worlds have been turned upside down. Um, we've also been doing a lot of tweaks to the building, as you know, through the capital improvement project, but also that has afforded us an opportunity to reevaluate the building as we've been looking at our various spaces, our furnishings, uh, the purposing of various areas, um, even little changes that we've been able to make have had big impacts. Um, you may recall that back in 2020, we went fine free, and that has had um, a number of um, impacts on us as well, positively. We're seeing greater um, usage of our collections. Um, we're seeing higher rates of engagement. Um, our cardholder um, active cards, um, uh, over 70% of our library cards have been active, active in the last year, despite the pandemic. Um, and nearly 80% of households in Wilmat have an active library card in them, which is pretty remarkable. Uh, so there's a high rate of engagement there. And we feel that by applying that equity lens and eliminating barriers to access like fines, we've been able to increase um, use of the library. Um, taking that equity lens further, we've been really doing a lot to try to enhance equity, diversity, and inclusion. Um, our EDI efforts were built into this uh, strategic plan before that was really a term that was used an awful lot um, by champion um, uh, the, the leadership of our past administration and board for bringing that forward and for making that a strong initiative. The staff has run with it and continues to do individual professional development as well as the programming and collection development. Uh, that they're doing in support of those initiatives. The big projects that we had in this past year um, would be individually monumental, but we took on a lot of tasks as well um, this last year that I really want to commend the staff for taking on. I've talked a lot about the capital improvement project this year. That alone is really daunting and takes over a lot of time and impacts the public in a big way. Um, that is a big deal unto itself, but we've taken on a lot of other projects as well. The RFID project would be a major project in any given year, let alone in a pandemic year. Um, and the staff really did a fabulous job, again, handling a quarter of a million items, um, changing their procedures, working through um, adaptations to try to launch this to the public, um, adapting workflows back of house, um, changing the way that we process materials, the way that we deaccession items, um, it's been a huge, a huge impact. And we'll also change the way that we're able to study the usage of the collection and look at our metrics in an effort to better serve our communities through data-driven decision-making. We've also completed our website redesign project. As we talked about earlier, uh, the website is a work in progress. Um, it is only two months old. There are a number of items that are still on our list that are not complete. Uh, the item that was shared in public comment is certainly one of the areas that we definitely um, still have on our list and we're not satisfied with as an organization or board. Um, there's a lot to improve there. So um, we continue to, to work on the refinement of the database and the way that we present information to the public there. However, we've made a heck of a lot of improvements to the website as well uh, to promote access to our collections, as well as our, um, a number of our resources in the way that we present information and programming to the community. Um, 
staff growth and professional development has really grown at an exponential rate through uh, 2020. Um, with the, um, every month you've seen in my director's report, all of the webinars, the events, the training, the programming that my staff has been involved in, in terms of professional development so that they can enhance the skills that they provide back to the community. Um, the staff just has been completely engaged with their own individual development and uh, that pays dividends in the services ultimately that we offer to the community. Um, we've also completely redesigned our newsletter. Um, we've had three different iterations of this new newsletter that have come out since we launched that in the, in the summer. Um, Sarah Beth's team has done a remarkable job in enhancing our communications and the newsletter looks really, really sharp. Uh, so that is a huge task that's taken on. And then at the top of all of this, I mentioned how we've been growing our partnerships and trying to define those as well. Those are the key highlights. Um, I would be happy to pull out any individual items or to discuss anything that's on your mind uh, regarding our progress towards the strategic plan. I have a question. There was some talk about uh, having some of the board members do, Lisa, Director McDonald, about sitting at the front and getting some input from some of the patrons. Is that something that is ongoing? Is that something you're looking for trustees to help with? That was put on hold because Anthony wanted us in the vestibule and I don't think any patron would stop in the vestibule during the winter and talk to us. And so I think COVID put, sort of put a glitch in it, but I think the key was to find some place, like there's a place where they put book suggestions. And I think you've got the, that might be a good place, but I think it needs to be sort of in the front. I know he didn't want us roaming around, which I would do, to <laughs> talk to the patrons and just, you know, introduce ourselves and just get about a three minutes of comment in terms of just basically what they liked, what, you know, what they would, you know, what, what, the, we, what we could do to serve them better. And so I think we have a difference of opinion of that. I, I feel comfortable with in terms of not, you know, just asking them, just, you know, got a few minutes. So that was one thing. I think the other thing uh, that we had said in conjunction with the strategic plan is to have uh, a half day session and you all agreed to it with the staff, with the department heads to talk about, to get their perspectives as to you know each of their departments in terms of what's going on, what their strengths, what their weaknesses are, what they would like to see, what can be improved, not necessarily weaknesses, but what could be improved and what the future is looking like in terms of where they see their services going. So that is, I think, the next step in the strategic planning process because I think we need to have a better understanding of what's going on in each of the departments. It's fine to talk to the patrons and that's part of the process, but I think it's good to get a background as to what's going on within the library. Director Austin, do you want to talk a little bit more about that? One more footnote, if I can, can I, before, I'm sorry, can I add one thing before Anthony speaks? Um, Lisa, if we ever do have roll out the idea of, of board members being able to interact in the library with patrons, mm -hmm. um, not being able to project the future in terms of what COVID is going to cause us right. to uh, you know, but if we're wearing masks for the for the next several years, um, I would suggest that we get some kind of photo ID so we're not just approaching patrons as mass people and, and they can't know our faces. So at least we have a photo we can show them. Plus, you've stuff. got your name badge. Yeah, well, I know, but, but, I, but, but that's just our name. Yeah. I, I think it's important to have, I mean, just have a, I, I think for this kind of outreach, it would, okay. it would be helpful to a patron to have an image of what our faces look like as, as yeah. we're being, if, as, if we're talking to them. So just, just a footnote. Thing. Yeah, yeah, plastic thing. Showing. We can take the picture off of the website and put it onto a badge or something. I, I just, I, I'm not sure what the, what the easy solution is, but something that. But that's I a good think, idea, Stuart. Have it large size. Yeah. Have those. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, our youth services librarians, by example, have done that. They wear they wear buttons so that the the children can can recognize um, who their librarians are. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of opportunity for us to do community engagement. I think that's a big part of what we need to be working on here as we start developing this next phase of, de um, of development for us with the strategic plan. So yes, um, it is true that I, I would prefer that we greet um, the public in a space that is more neutral um, and that we're not approaching people within the building as they're trying to do their business. 
Um, and I wanna try to find a space that is gonna be appropriate for us to make sure that there's um, ample space around us for social distancing and so on, that we're gonna, not gonna be blocking any high traffic areas when we do that type of com uh, community engagement. That said, I think there are a number of ways that we can do this. Um, so um, with the auditorium reopening, um, I, I know that that's down in the basement, but we could schedule time and we could invite uh, the community to come down there. We could host forums like this in a virtual environment. Um, we can solicit feedback um, in a number of ways. We can send out postcards, we can request it digitally. Um, so there's a number of ways that I think that we can continue to collect feedback from the public about how to inform this next phase of the strategic plan. And yes, I am looking forward to us holding um, a workshop where uh, the staff and the board can come together and can talk more about our development as we move forward. Because one of the early things was to have food, but we can't have food right now because refreshments would always get somebody in, but there is a hold on eating and drinking right now. Yeah, we want to keep, we want to encourage people to keep their masks on for right now, yeah. yeah. So, because food is the ultimate attractor, so. Okay, thank you. All right, other, other comments or questions about the strategic plan or my reports? Just one question, Anthony. One of the things that I had asked was, do you see do you see all these still being the key areas, and that's probably something to explore? Are there any? Is there anything that you think is missing that's not included? And I also know that you want to review the mission and the vision, but we'll. I, I do, yeah, I do think that it is time for us to review the, the, vision, the vision and mission statements. Um, the staff and I have talked about that a fair bit. And um, yes, it, it is copied verbatim in a number of places in our policy, like the ones we just approved this evening. So when we do make those changes, we're going to have to, you know, review policy again and make those changes. Um, but uh, I think, you know, by and large, the scope of the things that, that we do um, as a library are all generally covered by the strategic plan. It might just be a matter of semantics and how we're going to convey um, how successful we are in accomplishing the objectives. Um, that we may want to phrase our objectives in a way that help us to more clearly delineate and define what the action steps are going to be that will satisfy that. Uh, I guess that's the one bit of feedback that the staff and I have regarding this strategic plan is that, you know, they're they're broad the way that these objectives are written. So um, you'll, you'll see the report goes on and on in a lot of cases, and you're like, well, is that really what we meant when we wrote the strategic plan objective? Is, is that the thing that we wanted to put in there? So um, maybe we want to phrase things in a way that makes it clearer for us to understand, are we hitting our benchmarks? Um, but we've got a number of examples that we can borrow, and like I said earlier, we do a lot of them. Um, uh, uh, environmental scanning and look at the way other libraries and other organizations are, are drafting their strategic plans. And I think we've got a lot of examples we can use. Okay, thank you. You've been busy. <laughs> you and your staff have been very busy. So it's thanks. been a busy year. Yeah. This is like the longest um, uh, number of pages, I think, for, a, for a, uh, a board meeting I've ever seen. I don't know if there's been one, more than 129 pages, but I thought that was a record. So. <laughs> He's keeping the paper mills and <laughs> business. Okay. The digital ones, yeah. Yeah. I'm still hardcore. Okay, anything else that you'd like to add to your director's report? I think that's all I got tonight. You've heard a lot from me. Okay, any other questions? Does anybody else have any for Director Austin? Okay, thank you. Okay, committee reports. Trustee Nealon, do you have anything regarding ILA? I do not. Okay, and Director Austin, do you have anything regarding the rails and ILA? Um, the only thing I would add is on your agenda, you're going to see that there we do have the legislative meetup coming up on, on President's Day. Um, that is an ILA-sponsored event. Um, our elected officials um, have really been good about attending that in the past, so I would encourage you, if you can, um, to attend that. It is a virtual meeting this year. And um, if not, I, I do think that they're going to record that and we can access it later. But if you do want to attend, just let me know and we'll get you registered. But the handouts tend to be the most interesting. So are you going? I go. Yep, I will go. Okay, So if you can just share the handouts as to what the focus is in terms of legislative issues, I think that tends to be really helpful in terms of summarizing it. Okay. For those of us that might not be going. Thank you. 
Uh, you've got the President's Day Legislative Meetup. You've got the Village of Wilmette is celebrating 100 and, oh, communication. You all got communication today. There were four positive comments and uh, one uh, congratulating uh, the, and I, we never state the names of who sent it out of privacy, but one firm con congratulating the library on their rating and their award from one of our and she smiles and looks away. Thank you. <laughs> and so we appreciate that. And then you got two compliments for Director Austin and the entire staff regarding COVID protocols. And then there was one complimenting Christine for assistance with Shutterfly two days before Christmas, a, per a woman whose mother had died. And so she was putting together a booklet. And so that was a wonderful one to see. And then you've got some other uh, communication and I think uh, Ms. Lawler uh, communicated that all the board got and then we got another one from Director Austin today that was anonymous so that's the communication and uh, you got President's Day the village of Wilmette will celebrate its 150th birthday uh, the library is participating in Winterfest it's on February 12th and they will have an ice sculpture. There will be ice sculptures all along the village. And there may be some other entertainment to be confirmed. And you'll be seeing that virtually. You'll be seeing that through uh, digital communication. And the hope is that it will be in conjunction with the village's Sunday celebration on February 12th. Anything else to add on that one? OK. And so there are a lot of things going for that that Sunday. So please stay tuned and you can all see it by just going to wilmet150.org to see all the things that are going on. Uh, you've talked about the uh, one book everyone reads and then in terms of additional uh, new business. Uh, Joan, do you want to talk a little bit about what we did uh, with the uh, junior high? with the Student Leadership Village in sure. terms of, that was your first time attending. That was my first time, right. This league. is um, a program that's been going on for many, many years, uh, I think almost 50 years, where a um, number of students, probably more in the past, I think they had 30 um, junior high students, eighth graders, who were chosen to participate. And um, village president sent up Plunkett, spoke on behalf of the board, village board, that these students will be invited to go to attend a village board meeting or, or a number of them and actually participate. So they'll, she stressed how they'll get to sit in the driver's seat and make some, and how would they make decisions? How would they allocate funds? How would they uh, feel about certain things going on in their village? Um, and so I think it's, it's a wonderful program and probably an eye opener too young people who never think twice about how things get done. And um, so they did have representation, both um, elected representatives and staff from uh, Lisa and I attended. Um, and then there was District 39, there was um, the village, and then there was um, a park board. So they had us in, um, I think just two or three separate rooms. And the students came to us and each one of us uh, spoke on behalf of who we were, how we got there. I mean, how were we elected? Were we staff? Um, and what we did. And they had a series of questions for us. And um, it was really, um, I loved it. I just, my kids are older. So I, I loved being around these. 13-year-olds, um, most of whom were very attentive and, and inquisitive and um, asked good questions. So um, I, I think it's a great program and uh, the league put this on. And um, I think that it's uh, something that we all should take a turn doing. Um, um, I, I, I really was engaged and um, some of the kids, one young man actually came up afterwards and said, he mentioned a few staff members who he recalled that were very kind to him, library staff members. And I haven't had a chance to share that, one of whom I think I know is still working. The other one I believe is retired. 
So the impact that library staff have on um, young minds and, and it, it was delightful. It was really great. And um, I think most of them never realized either that there are so many people, maybe their neighbors or so forth, or their, maybe their families or their parents who run and are elected. And again, I don't think it ever crosses their mind that there's an election in Wilmette, like there's an election for state rep and senators and the president. So, um, it, and then one other thing I have to say is that I really enjoyed getting to hear what other, um, well, in this case, my, my group, there was a gentleman from District 39 who has a huge job, as, as so many others do, of course, but um, I learned a lot myself. So it was, it was well done. Thank has you, anyone John. else attended and been part of that? Yes. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's always have. very fulfilling. It's a great, great experience. Yeah. Yeah. And thank it's you, called John. the League of Student and Government Leaders. And um, the uh, League of Voters does it every year. It's it's an introduction to civics and in, in, in real time. So yeah, I'm glad you liked it. Yeah, in the past, uh, the library used to have a board. That was a long time ago. Students would participate in the library board, but that was cut out some years ago in terms of that participation. So yeah, thank you. So the next thing is uh, we're gonna be doing next month Director Austin's uh, evaluation. And so the process is going to be, we're going to be uh, sending you uh, an e a evaluation form with his accomplishments, a brief summary of his accomplishments, which have been many. And then we're going to have a deadline. So we would like it back within that deadline because Joan is going to compile it. Additionally, we'll be doing some one-on-one -on -one interviews with some of his staff as well as I'll be talking to uh, the Kenilworth president just to get, you know, what's working and just to get a general idea. So probably next month at our meeting, we will be going into closed session, which is what we usually do when we go to review, okay? And so you'll be hearing from us and if you've got questions, just holler. Thank you. Is there any other new business? Okay, anything else? Going once, going twice. I move, do you have anything else to say, Director Austin? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna do this motion. I move that the board <laughs> adjourn this meeting at 7.43. Is there a second? I will second. It's been moved by Trustee McDonald and seconded by Trustee Wolf that the meeting adjourn at 7.43. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Have a good evening and thank you for thank coming. You for thank, you, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Good Bye -bye. night. All.